This is the Jim and Terry Show coming to you in the Hobbit Hole Studio. I'm Terry, one of your hosts, and beside me is my good friend, Jim. Hi, everyone. It's Jim Sampson. Not Alex Jones. There was a week when we did three We're or four. We're having back in here. <laughs> well, I, I do miss his flamboyance, that Alex Jones <laughs> character, but I'm glad he's being dealt with by the courts. Not the courts of public opinion, because that's where Alex Jones makes his millions from the public. I'm glad it's in the courts where justice for all, blind justice, where it doesn't matter who you are, a Trump or an Alex Jones, it doesn't matter. No one's above the law. No one is above the law. Speaking of the law, it takes police to round people up and enforce the law. How about the morality police in Iran and the death of a woman who was rounded up for not wearing the hijab? I thought she actually was wearing it. They just said she was wearing it wrong. Really? I, th- I thought. I-, I may be wrong on that. But nevertheless, what a, what a sad way to lose your life beaten to death by a, a bunch of guys because you're not dressed the way they think you should be dressed. You know, it's not like she was running around in a bikini. And by George, please don't beat them to death. Right. So let, let's it. talk about the idea that there is such a thing as a morality police. Yeah. <laughs> what is that all about? Well, it's those who are k- keeping control of, of what they believe, I guess in this case, Allah wants. Uh, uh, and, and we have to watch that in all of our faiths. I believe there's standards and morality, but I also don't believe in uh, killing anybody who isn't going to believe the same way I believe. So they're afraid. Most of these things come from afraid. So they're afraid of losing control, losing superiority as men, maybe, or uh, just as the Ayatollah or whatever it is that's ruling over these people. And they're afraid. So therefore, you know, this time they went one step too far, but they may be able to squelch it down by just killing everybody. So this is a Muslim country, Iran. This is an Islamic morality I don't know enough about this to speak knowledgeably, so all I'm going to suggest is my own perspective, which is this. If you believe that colored candles, that reciting words, that dressing in a certain way, in any way, impacts the divine, the God sense of things, then I think people are sorely mistaken. Well, people mistake a lot, uh, even in my own faith, which is Christianity. Uh, we had to talk about this, one of our best talks ever, folks. Wish we were in on it. <laughs> at breakfast. Yeah, at breakfast. But we talked uh, about, you know, uh, what I would do if someone said, could you organize a church? I'd say, okay, but it's going to be radical because I'm going to take First Corinthians and go with it. Uh, because there's a lot of things that we do that have tradition, that are just traditions, that that man-made. It was totally man-made. It had nothing to do with the first century church at all, or Jesus at all. And so I'd go back to the roots as far back as I could, while also still paying for the electrical bill. You know, <laughs> so, uh, so I'm assuming in Islam, a lot of things were taken wrong and bent out of joint. Uh, uh, an example, like Hebrew, uh, the, the Jews, the Ten Commandments. Well, by the time Jesus came along, I think there was 640 commands. You know what I mean? People just kept adding to it. And in that case, you have to tell yourself, is anybody able to possibly keep any of them? No. So then you got a bunch of elite lying (laughs) about their ability to carry on this perfect world. And we've seen many pastors in the Christian faith who were not living the life that they were condemning everybody else who weren't living the life they were condemning them when they were just one of them. Now, head coverings, which is the specific of this one in Iran at present, was also practiced by Jews. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, isn't that a, a Christian tradition in the early church? That women keep their head covered? Yes, yes. Okay, so the variations on the same thing. And theme. I think men had to cover their heads if they were speaking in the church. They had to put a, a th- robe on, uh, I The think. shawl over top. I, I th- yeah. I'm not sure. But okay. yeah, there's all kinds of things that that were, mm-hmm. and I guess were a part of the culture. And I think that's where you're going. Yes. Of the time, the culture yes. of the time. So here's my perspective on all of these things, is that they're all add-ons. They're all people somehow thinking that if I wear this color, or this shape, or this fabric, whether it's sackcloth and ashes, if I do these things, if I fast for 40 days, that somehow I'm going to bend the will of the 
Almighty or your concept of the Almighty. I'm not sure about any of that. Yeah, but there's another way of looking at it. We have many Canadians now, uh, beautiful women with their, what do you call it, the, the head? Hijabs. Hijabs, not covering their face, but they cover their head. Uh, I believe some of them are even Christians, but that's what they were taught by yeah, their parents their to do that. And it makes them feel good. It makes them feel holier, you know. I don't really have a problem with that. It, 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 like you, though, I don't think it matters all that much. You know, naked we came into this world, naked we leave. And I think we do a lot of things thinking we're pleasing God when, you know, God is a little bit more, believe it or not, he's, he's stern, but he's also pretty lenient. Jesus showed that when, when the disciples ate on the Sabbath and the Pharisees were all upset and Jesus wasn't upset and he was the son of God, uh, son of man. So we sometimes have to sit back and say, okay, wait a minute. You know, I like to do certain things that make me feel good. I go for a walk and I pray, you know, and I feel I've made a connection to God because some of my prayers are shallow. When I'm going to bed, I'm tired, and somehow I drift off into the who's going to win the hockey game. You know, sorry, Lord. Oh, sorry. Won't be the least. Yeah, yeah, no guff. <laughs> so I don't have any problem with someone. Here's my problem. If someone doesn't want to wear the headdress, my problem is making them. There and we I go. I think that's where you were there going. There we go. It took a little while and a few stories and a few zigs and zags, but we got there. That's yeah. Hey, listen, that's what you get with me on this side of the table. <laughs> I've got to put Jim on this side of the table so we can control things a little more. Yeah, uh, so my question is, is this the beginning of a Arab Spring, of one of those things where a Muslim country is going to reject authoritarianism, especially religious, right-wing, fundamental, Islamic authority and take it to the streets and will not rest until the men who make these laws are removed or women are listened to or something in the middle is reached yeah i i really don't know um i want to point out that there's a lot of men supporting these women in iran yes a lot of young men supporting yes. these women in iran and why not now you get to see their beautiful faces, their beautiful figures, and everything else. So I can understand why that's what you would want. And I can actually, in a warped way, understand that's why those are re religious authorities, uh, and I don't have any idea how really, truly religious they are, but I could see if you really were and you thought that's you're displeasing God by not wearing that headset, I could see how they would be upset. But upset to the point, how, to what standard are you going to kill them? And your question was, is this the end of this? Not for a while. I think there's going to have to be a lot more rotten, stinking bloodshed and tortures and everything else, which man tends to do. Not man, mankind tends to do <clears throat> in order to uh, cover up their fear or whatever it is that's driving them into I, this I position. I still like that word fear because I think much of what we observe is based on fear. I agree. And authority, and in this case in Iran and Islam and other traditions, men make the rules. And I'm not sure about that anymore, and let's bring women to the table and see what happens. You'll have the same amount of corruption. Yeah, sure, bring them to the table. Well, we did have Margaret Thatcher, the Iron Lady. We have Iron had Lady, yeah. uh, examples of women who do hey, exactly Golden Mirror wouldn't have been a pushover either. No, I don't think so. So, okay. Uh, yeah, and I've uh, I've ran into in business some pretty strong women. So they're just they're they're no different than us in, in in that way. I think the only thing that would ever knock it back is when you're just depending on brute strength and man would dominate again. I think that's over in America, of course. But okay, I'm not sure where I was going to go with this. My my question is: Is this the beginning of? transformation in an Arab nation and I'll link it to Saudi Arabia which I had thought was moving away from this stuff until we had the murder and dismemberment of a Washington Post reporter under Mohammed bin Salman and I'm thinking they need some transformation as well uh, well, maybe Jared Kushner could use his two billion to finance some well, transition. Well, remember they think the West is the great Satan Yes. So, but it's funny enough because, like, I was watching a, a thing on Dubai. And uh, what do you think that that country, I know Dubai, is Dubai a country or a city? Oh, uh, it could be a city state. I'm not sure. Okay, whatever. What do you think the greatest income's coming in from that? Oil? Nope. Tourism? Oil's only 5%. Tourism's over 20. 
20%. So what's the greatest? Tourism? I think tourism. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's the, the, the great. Now, th- out of that, they found a way to not tax their people and everything. So this is incredible <laughs> when you think of the system. But if you're going to be good at tourism, what are you going to be good at, especially when the tourists are coming from the West? I think you'd be good at public relations. Well, everything the West wants. So how can you call them the great Satan if you're uh, becoming a the Satan? Irony. The, the irony. The irony, Jim. Yeah. There's lots more of that on the Jim nightlife. and Terry Show. They have show. a glorious nightlife there. can't stop Jim. He's going to keep talking. This <laughs> is the Jim and Terry Show. Leave Jim alone. Just leave him alone.